Martin is Natalie Bartanian with the hello everyone sorry about that um, I am Natalie Bartanian I am with the core community foundation I'm the executive director of the foundation and I wanted to hop on today to talk about something that I think is a big problem in the health and wellness space and in some ways I don't even think people realize how much of a problem it is but it is the issue of the fact that traditionally the wellness space has been for the privileged and the affluent and even with the addition of health insurance covering some of these expenses it's still not comprehensive it still doesn't prioritize our mental health and our emotional health and it doesn't have a proactive approach um, that we usually see in personal growth, transformational work, therapeutic work, you know, and we've noticed, especially at CORE, that marginalized communities, which are the ones that really need this work the most to heal from the impact of subtle trauma, overt trauma, you know, they have very limited access to healing, to healing work you know, um, very limited access to tools, to, to actual tools um, that will support that emotional healing and emotional resiliency. And again, this is a problem that we don't realize. Like I went down a bit of a research um, rabbit hole this morning to really show and outline the way that this discrepancy, you know, there's a gap. There's a gap in who is accessing the help, the work, the the emotional healing space. And one of the problems that is a part of this is our our gap between income, you know, the gap between the rich and the poor, especially in the US, has widened. According to the Washington Post, in 2019, they reported that the income inequality in the US hit its highest level since the Census Bureau started tracking it five decades ago, 50 years, and it is at its worst, at its biggest gap, right? And that the federal minimum wage stood at 725 for more than a decade, right? New York Times reports that in 2019, the income gap is growing and with a deadly effect in the sense that Portions of Americans aged 55 or older are still working. 10% um, more that age, gr age group, right? And that three quarters of rich Americans who are in their 50s and 60s were still alive from between 92 and 2014 versus half of poor Americans made it to 2014. So just even in that sense, life expectancy, our communities of color live four to five years less than their white counterparts. Um, and due to various reasons, part of it also being that they've historically gotten such poor health care and quality of care, according to the African American Policy Forum, that they don't even seek health care because of their anticipated reaction from their health care practitioners, right? And the discrimination and the racial inequality that they're dealing even in the healthcare, even in the industry that's made and is supposed to care for them, you know? And, and then also imprisonment, like seeing that our communities of color, African Americans and Hispanics, that make up less of the population, 32% of the population, and they are 56% of the incarcerated population. I mean, again, the gap and where we spend our money. I mean, 2012 alone, according to the NWACP, we spent $81 billion on corrections. Um, and the spending on pre-K to 12 public education, right, that the rate has tripled in relation to that spending on education. So we have a problem. And there's these traumas that are not getting tended to, not getting healed. Right? And when they're not addressed, not tended to, not healed, they get reinforced, they get enhanced even as time goes on. Right, The hole gets dug even deeper. 
and becomes even more challenging to climb out of. And the intergenerational trauma, again, it keeps perpetuating over and over and over again. So not only do we get more of the same, we get worse. It gets worse as time goes on. And then there's subtle ways, like the way that individuals start to question their worth, right? Because they're internalizing these traumas as if it's theirs, like they somehow did something to receive this. And so this questioning of worth, um, because they feel they can't overcome these insurmountable problems that have been given to them because of society, because of culture, right? And that they don't have the tools to even address. So again, the gap widens and, and it's a problem that we've seen at core, we've experienced at core, that low income and marginalized communities are unable to afford our programs regardless of the rate, regardless of even if we've created discounted online programs, like that's the thing. There's a problem bigger than that which we can solve. And what doesn't work, what we've seen that doesn't work is to expect those that don't have the access or the financial means to the healing work to figure it out somehow. That is perpetuating the problem. And I personally have seen it in the wellness space, this feeling of somehow these communities are gonna like magic their way into money or that you know they're not manifesting hard enough. Yet we ignore the very systemic things that are keeping them in those limiting situations and limiting experiences. And as Albert Einstein said himself, we can't solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them, right? Something new is needed, new thinking, new access points, new support in order to shift this dynamic that we've seen. And again, that's gotten worse over time. And, and at core, we knew that there was a different way that that was needed. And that possibility and that idea, that vision, is what birthed the core community foundation. And I'll talk more about that later. But we saw what was possible, right? We saw that the trauma healing work that we had been doing at CORE, and we've been doing for 30 years, over three decades of it, and the impact it's had on people and the ripple it's had in their families by, again, stopping the trauma from repeating itself, right? We have an opportunity in the present day not to continue that pattern because we have seen hurt people hurt people. They don't realize that's happening, but when you don't have any resources for healing, you're just going to operate in the same way you always have. And so we've seen that when people have the tools for emotional healing and emotional resiliency, right? They're able to shift. They're able to create something new in a way that they weren't able to before. They're able to reach out for help, right? Because they're now creating also communities of other people doing this work too, so that they don't have to do it alone. Because again, that's also very much this like Western world. Everybody has to do it themselves and pull up their bootstraps and like figure it out somehow. But that's not what's worked, especially for communities that have thrived for a long period of time, it's because of that more communal thinking that we help those that don't have the access, right? We lift those up. We use our privilege. Those that have resources help those that don't. And then you have other resources and you give it to those that don't, right? It's coming together, which is why we also named our foundation the Core Community Foundation, because it is, it's, it's doing that work in community, right? Supporting each other in community, coming together to support those that don't have access to this work, to this deep emotional healing work. And this is what is going to solve the inequality problem and get us closer to the vision that we see. And what we see at the Core Community Foundation, we envision a world where Every single person has the same access to being happy, healed, and whole. Every single person. And our mission is to provide access to those people, right? Regardless of your age, because we do work with teens too that don't historically have access, and regardless of your income, that you get to have access 
to deep emotional healing work. And that's what, and that we offer at core, right? So what at the foundation we do is we offer scholarships for adults that are ending, attending CORE's workshop, and we've been creating programs for our youth to experience those same tools, those same opportunities earlier in life. I mean, can you imagine if, for those of you that have done any kind of work, like whether it's therapy, whether it's a group program, whether it's a workshop, whether it's having a coach, imagine having that at 13, 14, 15, 16. Can you imagine how different your life would be? I mean, that's what we want to create. And that's the thing, like what's going to help solve this inequality problem is by offering programs, offering opportunities, right? Creating, building bridges to help people so that we're all able to be on the same footing. And whether that's through financial means, right? Whether that's through programs that are being made that are available to all, and that's what we want to see at CORE. That's what we want to see at the CORE Community Foundation. That's why we created it. And one way you can help today is by donating to the foundation. Like I said, we create opportunities. We provide access. In the two years that we've been in existence as at the foundation, we've offered 22 different scholarships to folks for online programs, for one-day workshops, for half-day workshops, for eight-week programs, um, all around how to cultivate compassion, how to heal from those traumas, how to release those traumas, how to, how to know when you're in a survival state and a survival place versus a healthy state and a healthy place. Like these are education, learnings, tools, right, that most don't have access to especially those from marginalized communities. And so you can help by donating. And I will put a link in the comments and in the description for the video. But I really, really encourage you somehow to get involved to, to support someone that might not have access to this work. Um, because it is, for some, literally a matter of life and death. And so, and if not actual death, but like our quality of life, you know, while we are actually living. So thank you so much for being with me today. And I really hope that this has inspired you to help solve that inequality and create um, a world where everyone has that same access to healing work. All right. Have an amazing day, everyone.